Amen. Pray the Lord, brethren. God is good for every moment of our life. And um, I thank God for this Finding God series that we have always interacted with the Word of God. And this is another chance that God gives us. And so we pray together like we always do. Father God in heaven, we thank you for every and single opportunity that you give us in interacting with your word. We pray that you enable us to think through this word, to enable us to move forward in your ministry. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Friends, the message that um, comes to mind to share with you now is a very, very common one. Many of us have shared about it. Many of us have preached about it. Many of us have read it. And I just want to repeat it for purposes of our own well-being spiritually. And this message is about the man in the Bible called Jabez. Is one of the texts. And there are only two verses that talk about him. And he disappears. And this man Jabez is in the book of First Chronicles, chapter 4, verses 9 and 10. And the Bible talks about this man. I have been compelled. My inner compulsion is I talk about him, even when he is so common in people's prayer. Whenever they pray, they mention Jabez, and many times we have preached about him, and many times we have gotten encouragement from him. And so I just get compelled to share again about him. And this is what the Bible says verbatim, that Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. And his mother called his name Jabez, saying, because I bore him in pain. And verse 10, Jabez called upon the God of Israel, and he said, Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my border and that your hand might be with me, and that you would keep me from harm, so that it might not bring me pain. And God granted what he asked. Nice text. A blessing that we derive from God's word. And just like I said, it's not new. But the moment it comes again a second time, a third time, or a tenth time, or a hundredth time, or a thousandth time, there is something that God wants to speak to us this moment. Jabez, the Bible mentions about him, and nothing more, but about the prayer that he made. And during his time, he recalled the circumstances of his birth. He recalled what his mother had given him. And the name, the Bible is saying, he was given the name because... His mother said that she produced him in pain. And so I just want to make mention of the four things that this man brings out in this prayer. And these four things, one, Jabez prays and says that may God bless him. That is point number one, that he would be blessed indeed. Number two, that God might be with him wherever he goes, that God might be with him wherever he would be. And point number three, that God would enlarge his territory. And so he was looking at his boundaries, that God would enlarge them. And point number four, that God would keep him from evil. God would keep him from harm. And so, this is, is very, very important for us as believers who read this Bible. This Bible was written for our instruction. This Bible was written for our rebuke. This Bible was written for our encouragement. So that when we read it, we derive very many things that can move us forward. And so for Jabez's prayer, he connects closer with his God, whom he knew was the source of all the blessings, was the source of the, 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 the abundancy. And remember, 
that actually he knew it very, very well because he based on what his mother had given him. And remember that we believers know for real, for sure, that God's blessings are real and they produce real effects. So Jabez teaches us that the real effects actually came about in his own life. And the Bible is saying, and God granted him what he asked for. Now, what I derive from this, the four things that actually this man brings before God, is actually God grants him his prayer. And so the encouragement that I give you today, this moment round is God answers prayer. So never get bogged down that your prayer may have delayed to be responded to, to be answered. But our God, asking in line with what God wants you to do. God answers prayer because the God who granted the desire, God who answered the prayer of this man Jabez is the same God. He has never changed. The Bible says that he is the same yesterday, today and forever. And so this God that we believe in, who was and is and is to be, this God who is the Alpha and the Omega, the Bible talks about him as the beginning, our beginning, and this is the end. And so he has been there. Other scriptures, other writings call him the Ancient of Days. Hallelujah that. That he is the Ancient of Days. And so he was with, and actually one of these days, I have positioned myself and said that the God who created the earth, the God who created the stars and the stars which Abraham saw at night, the God who created the sun and the sun which Joshua commanded to stand still. These things have never changed. They have remained the very creations that God had put in place. Now, friends, that God who answered the prayer of Abraham, that God who answered the prayer of Joshua, that God who answered the prayer of Moses, that God who answered the prayer of Daniel, is the same God that can answer our prayer today. And so I just want to encourage us that Jabez prayed and God answered him. Now, the book of James adds something very, very crucial for us, for you and me. Uh, of course, we cannot read everything that is, but we just pick a few things that help us to move forward. And the letter of James, chapter 4, verse 2, the Bible says that you desire and do not have, so you murder, you covet and cannot obtain, so you fight and quarrel. You do not have because you do not ask. Now, friends, this is an encouragement to me. That we do not have because we do not ask. Our Lord Jesus Christ mentions it briefly and to the point. Ask and receive. Seek and you'll find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. And so this is very, very important in the life of Jabez the man that did make the prayer before God. And thousands of years later or hundreds of years later when Jesus comes and calls the apostles and these apostles also do ministry. Now time had Passed long, long, long enough. Now James comes and says, you do not have because you do not ask. Now, shall we position ourselves, you and I, that we ask, that we look at the position of our heart, that God who answers prayer, that God who answered the prayer of Jabez will answer your prayer today. And so he says many times we have given in to fights. Many times we have given in to quarrels. Many times we have given in to, you know, um, lots of things, grumbling, because we do not ask. Now, this is very important for us. Bringing our requests to God has a purifying effect on our lives. Because actually, you know, that what you have, God has given you. And so it has a purifying effect on your, on your life. And it has an influence because you'll give a testimony about it. And when you give a testimony about it, some other brother, some other sister will hear about it. 
and they also glorify God. And so it keeps multiplying and multiplying and multiplying. And so it all gives glory to God. And so my brothers and sisters, may the God who answered Jabez's prayer, of course, I would have gone into details of the names that we have, the, you know, the, how people brand us, the, how they call you, what they give you, what they term you to be. And sometimes all those nicknames have effect on you. I would have gone into that. But this time around, I was, I'm concentrating on God who answers prayer. The one who answered Jabez's prayer will answer your prayer. And First John chapter 4, 5, verse 14, the Bible does mention something which is also critical in our Christian walk. And this first John chapter 5, verse 14, the Bible does mention something about prayer. Of course, if you're talking about the man, Jabez, and Jabez does present something for us that we need it, that we pick from. And chapter 5, verse 14, the Bible says, and this is our confidence. This is the confidence that we have toward God. That if we ask, remember, if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Amen. Many times we have asked, many times we have pleaded, many times we have cried, many times we have presented our requests, many times we have presented our desires, but we have not aligned ourselves to God's will. And so this is an ingredient that many, many of us, many, many people, don't bring, don't keep, don't put into consideration, and so my desire, your desire, should be according to God's will. In the Lord's prayer, our Lord Jesus Christ teaches that may your will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. So God's will paramount in the prayer. And then at the time that Jesus was being crucified, was going to be crucified, he made a prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane, and said. Not my will, but your will be done. And so, friends, the issue is that John is presenting to us in his first letter, chapter 5, verse 14, that this is our confidence that we have toward God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know, verse 16, verse 15, if we know that he hears us in whatever we ask, we know that we have the requests that we have asked of him. We thank God for these revelations that come at such a time as this. We have the moments that have, we are so low. You know, COVID has caused trouble. You know, poverty has caused trouble. You know, many, many things have happened in our life. And so we need to continue waiting upon God. Like Jabez was praying that actually may you keep me from pain, from evil, from harm. So may we, you and I, continue pleading with God, aligning ourselves to the will of God, with the will of God, and so that what he desires happen. And I'm sure one day, this COVID that is ravaging us, God will carry it away. Because Jabez's prayer was, may you keep me from evil. May you keep me from harm. And we also pray that God, may you keep us from harm. And so I pray for you, as you pray for me, that we'll continue aligning ourselves to his will, to God's will. And so friends, as I turn towards the finish, the Bible is very clear. I just came to share about this man, Jabez, and a few other Bible portions, our confidence that we have in approaching. I just thank God that every time I kneel down and pray, I just thank God that every time I stand, even, on, even when I'm walking, someone can, be, can see you walking, not knowing what is running in your mind, but you are saying your prayer, hallelujah. God sees what is in our heart. As long as we align ourselves to God's will, approaching God, does not necessarily mean that we have a place, a specific place maybe. Yes, those places are there. We have to go to church. We have to go to the altar. We have to have all those things. But since the Bible urges us to pray at all times also, we also put into consideration that everywhere that we can be, whether you are on the road, whether you are going to class or whatever it is, whether you are going to work, whether you are going to do anything, remember that actually God hears our prayer. 
and this is our confidence. Like I'm saying, like we are reading First John chapter 5, verse 14, in approaching God. So during this COVID time, let us approach God. Whatever times that I had, let us continue approaching God, aligning ourselves to the will of God, so that actually His will be done in our lives. And I know it does happen. I know He wishes us the very best. And so, brethren, God is the owner of our destiny. Very important. My future is in God's hands. Your future is in God's hands. God is the owner of our destiny. Jabez knew that God is, I mean, his future was in God's hands. Go backwards. Reach the man Abraham. Reach, or even backwards more. Go to Noah. Go to Lot. Go to those all those men of old. They knew their destiny. They knew their future lied in the hands of God. Moses, Joshua, Gideon, name them. Go ahead, Daniel, the three young men, and the rest. New Testament times, people knew that their destiny was in God's hands. Paul, Peter, now, how about me? How about you? Your destiny is in God's hands. So God is the owner of my destiny, of your destiny. God is the owner of your future or my future. And so, he, since he's the creator and he's our maker, I enjoy reading Psalm 100. And it just invites us with thanksgiving. Let us go in. Let us go in into his courts with thanksgiving, worshiping and praising and, you know, entering into prayer into the hands of God because it's our confidence that God answers prayer. And so, many times we get limited by what other people call us and that's about the names that we have. Sometimes limitations rob our potential and purpose. This is very important, our limitations, because we are small or because we are big or because we are tall. Those could be limitations, although some people can be endowed. And sometimes they rob our potential. Now, whatever limitation that you could be having as a man, whatever limitation you could be having as a woman, whatever limitation you could be having a boy as a boy or a girl, it tends to dwarf you. But remember that you need to get up. Get up my brother, get up my sister, and beat the dwarfism and reach God. Zacchaeus knew. That is very important. Zacchaeus knew. And I will come back and share about Zacchaeus the man with a very big mind that he had to run. He dealt with his dwarfism. He dealt with his circumstances. Jabez dealt with his circumstances. Zacchaeus also dealt with his circumstances. And he was able to meet God. He was able to meet Jesus Christ at that tree, Scamot tree, when he was. And he knew where Jesus was going to pass. Now, we need to arise and shine. For our light has come, Isaiah chapter 60. We need to arise. You and I need to arise. Jabez arose. Joseph arose. Daniel arose. And they were able to shine. And so God is sending us out. God is sending you, my brother. God is sending you, my sister. That you, our destiny, will give glory to God. And so I thank God for this time that he has given us to this time round. That this man, Jabez, um, the, the, the portion that we have just been reading... It is actually critical for us. The four points that he actually rose, he raised, and now we can also borrow the leaf. And then our confidence is in approaching God, whatever circumstances of our lives, and that God will be able to answer us. Keep reading First Chronicles chapter 4, verses 9 and 10, and keep reading the other portions of Scripture that I've given you, that God will answer your prayer and bless me indeed. May he bless me indeed. May he bless you indeed. May he watch over you indeed. May he watch over me indeed. May he enlarge my territory. May he enlarge your territory. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <music>